Hi, welcome back to my channel. Our guest for today is Kenshin Imura, the protagonist of the manga Roni Kenshin, also popularly known as Samurai X. He will help us in our today's lesson. In our previous lessons, we had an introduction regarding the literary elements in our lesson number 13. We discussed elements of a plot in lesson number 14, major elements of a narrative in our lesson number 15, and different kinds of story characters in our lesson number 16. If you fail to watch our videos about it, I put its link in the description box below. Please complete watching our videos up to its end. I always add some activities and seat works at the end part of my videos to help you master the lesson that we are discussing. I also add at the end of the video all the shoutouts as my appreciation for your comments in my videos. I will mention and congratulate those who were able to finish the video and get a passing score in our seat works. Just comment the score that you'll get in the comment box down below. If you also want me to shout out your name in my next video, just leave a comment down below. Before we proceed to our lesson for today, please like this video as your support to my channel. You can also share this video to your friends, share the happiness, and most importantly, subscribe if you're not subscribed yet to my channel and hit the notification bell for you to be always updated to new lessons that I will upload here in my channel. For starters, I present to you the vocabulary words that you will encounter in our discussion. Try to match the words to their correct definition in the left column. I'll give you a moment to think about your answers. Time's up. Here are the correct answers. Before we proceed, I want you to remember that you should listen to the story very carefully and that you should prepare a pen and paper with you so you could take down notes of important details. I also want you to list down all the challenges or problems that the protagonist experienced in the story. A manslayer Kenshin Himura who played a major role in defeating Tokugawa Shogunate of Feudal Japan carries his reverse blade sword with a promise not to slay anymore. He embarks on a quest to repent for his sins by helping the innocent. He lodges in Kamiya Kashin Dojo where he becomes an acquaintance of Kaoru, the assistant instructor of the dojo. After being saved by Kenshin from Mafia, a stubborn young boy, Yahiko Myojin joins the dojo as a student. Sanosuke, a victim of war, becomes an acquaintance of Kenshin after losing to him in a duel. Together with his new friends, Kenshin carries out his ideal of helping the innocent. A series of events unfold that questions his ideal of living for the innocent and not slaying men. Kenshin faces every opponent with his reverse blade to uphold justice. One of the challenges that Kenshin faced in Ruruni Kenshin was his battle against a Gatling dog which was in the possession of Takade Kanryu. Upon revealing the weapon in his mansion to Himura Kenshin, Shinomori Aoshi and Myojin Yahiko, Kanryu boasts that the Gatling he has purchased is a new model unknown even to the Meiji government and capable of firing 200 rounds per minute. Kanryu first attacked Aoshi, shooting on Mitsu's leg while Kenshin and Yahiko flee, but the noise of the weapon drew all of the Oniwa Banshu to the scene where each of Aoshi's four subordinates give their lives in turn to rescue their Okashira and give Kenshin an opportunity to strike. Kenshin Himura demolished the weapon with just a single strike. Another challenge that Kenshin faced in Zuruni Kenshin was the change in the norms of the society, from the old ways of the sword which is killing and violence to the new ways which is living in peace. For Kenshin, the new is only truly new if the ways of the past are no longer necessary to protect it. Kenshin, a fearsome assassin called Batosai, vowed to stop killing because he believes killing is a way of the past. Such way has paved the way for the new age, where supposedly killing is no longer necessary. And such a new age can only be so if the ways of the old will no longer be restored to even in protecting the new age. Therefore, for Kenshin, it should be the conscious decision of those wanting a new era to stop themselves from resorting to the old ways even if this seems to be the last resort to protect the new. Using the ways of the old to fight for the new is like becoming the enemy you want to defeat. 
One of the great challenges that Kenshin faced in the story was his encounter against Makoto Shishio, who was the primary antagonist of the Kyoto arc, and a former Ishin Shishi Hitokiri known within the ranks as the Bakusai successor. But after his comrades in the government attempts and failed to assassinate him, Shishio Makoto spent the next decade slowly amassing power and developing an anti-government militalia headed by his own private group of elite warriors, the Jukong Katana. Flash forward to their encounter, after defeating Ayoshi and Sojiro, Kenshin faced Shishio himself. Kenshin had been worn out and injured from his consecutive fights with Ayoshi and Sojiro, and Shishio knocked him out fairly quickly. Saito entered and ambushed Shishio, attempting to kill with a blow to the head. However, Shishio's Hachigane, a headband containing a metal plate to cover the temple, stopped the attack, after which he quickly blocked every move Saito used against him and defeated him. Sanusuke also entered to fight Shishio but lost and could not even injure Shishio. Despite landing a direct Kotae no Kiwami to the face, finally, Ayoshi came and managed to stall Shishio long enough for Kenshin to regain consciousness. The two continued their fight to its climax and to the point that Kenshin unleashed his most powerful attacks after the overwhelming blow that was the Amakakero Ryo no Hirameki, Shishio's body starts to overheat to dangerous levels convulsing and becoming physically ravaged internally. Kenshin experienced a great challenge as a samurai when he met Shogo Amakusa, also a disciple of the Hiten Mitsurugi. Besides him and his master Hiko Seijuru XIII, Shogo was said to be the son of God and he led a rebellion with the Shimabara Christians to fight against the Meiji government. He also created a new Hiten Mitsurugi Ryo technique, the Rai Ryusen or also known as Thunder Dragon Flash. This technique of Shogo blinded Kenshin during their duel. Later on, Kenshin decided to fight Shogo one last time in order to bring him back to the light, to stop calling himself a deity, and admit to himself that he is not more than confused and doesn't like hurting human beings, like any other. The two confronted once again, both with their Amakakeru Ryo no Hirameki techniques, and Kenshin won. Guruni Kenshin is also a romantic story between Kenshin and Kaoru. Due to their beautiful love story, a fan was inspired to write a fanfiction story. Here's a scene in the fanfiction story entitled Comfort in the Midst of the Storm, written by Bessa. Later that night, the raging storm spat lightning down onto the earth, and Kaoru lay awake on her futon. With every boom of thunder, she pressed her hands to her ears and curled tighter into a ball on her side. But despite the drumming of the angry raindrops and her best efforts, Kaoru couldn't block the sound out. After an unusually loud clap of thunder, she couldn't help but utter a thin, shrill scream. Kenshin, who was also awake due to force of habit, raced into Kaoru's room, ready for any attacker with his Sakabatus blade gleaming in the dim light. Although he saw no threatening figure, his violet eyes were still flecked with gold when they fell upon Kaoru's shivering form. Kenshin quickly shot the weapon and knelt next to her. He then called Kaoru, shook her a little, not noticing that in his worry he dropped the honorifics. Our protagonist, Kenshin Himura, experienced the following challenges or problems in the story. 1. He embarks on a quest to repent for his sins by helping the innocent. 2. His encounter against Makoto Shishio. 3. Comforting Kaoru in the midst of a storm. 4. He was blinded by Shogo Amakusa's Rai Ryu Sen. 5. His battle against a Gatling gun. 6. The change in the norms of the society from the old ways to the new ways. In our previous lessons, we learned that conflict means the problems that the main characters experiences in the story. Every story worth reading has a conflict, but if there's no conflict, there's no tension in the story. Conflict that the writers choose to put for their characters against will have a significant effect on what kind of story to tell. Many stories contain multiple types of conflict, but there is usually one that is the main focus. There are six types of literary conflict. 1. Character versus self. 2. Character versus character. 3. Character versus nature. 4. Character versus supernatural. 5. Character versus technology. And 6. Character versus society.
character versus self is an internal conflict, meaning that the opposition the character faces is coming from within. This may entail a struggle to discern what the moral or right choice is, or it may also encompass mental health struggles. In other words, this is basically the character versus his own self. Character versus character is a common type of conflict in which one character's needs or wants are at odds with another's. In a nature conflict, a character is set in opposition to nature. This means the weather, the wilderness, or a natural disaster. Putting characters against phenomena like ghosts, gods, or monsters raises the stakes of a conflict by creating an unequal playing field. Character versus technology simply means that the character is in conflict with some kind of technology. And finally, a character versus society conflict is an external conflict that occurs in literature when the protagonist is placed in opposition with society, the government, or a cultural tradition or societal norm of some kind. Characters may be motivated to take action against the society by a need to survive, a moral sense of right and wrong, or a desire for happiness, freedom, justice, or love. In the answers that you gave earlier, one serves as our example for character versus self, two for character versus character, three character versus nature, four character versus supernatural, five is example for character versus technology, and six is our example for character versus society. Remember that the six types of literary conflict are character versus self, character versus character, character versus nature, character versus supernatural, character versus technology, and character versus society. Now, let's have an activity. For your today's activity, you are going to analyze the moving pictures, then match it to the correct type of literary conflict that it describes in the right column. I'll give you a moment to think about your answers. Time's up! Here's the answer key for our today's activity. For me to know if you really learned in our today's lesson, let's have a seat work. I believe you already have a pen and paper with you, so let's start. For our today's seat work, you're going to identify the word that is being described in each sentence. I'll give you a minute to do this. If the time is not enough for you, you may pause this video. Time's up! Let's check your work! Here's the answer key for our today's seat work. All set! 
I hope you've learned a lot from our today's lesson. I hope that now you know the different types of literary conflict. Please comment down below the score that you get in our seat work. If you pass, I'll post a shout out of you in our next video. Speaking of shout out, as my means of showing my gratitude and appreciation to all of your comments in my videos, I would like to post a shout out to the following people. Thank you for all of your encouraging and positive comments. Your comments are important to me. By the way, the sole purpose of me making video lessons like this is to help children be able to study at home. So in order for this video to reach as many children at home as possible, please share this video to your friends. And again, to help me be encouraged in making video lessons like this, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to click the notification bell as well so that you will always be updated to new lessons that I will upload here in my channel. Thank you and see you in our next video. Bye-bye!